Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this video, I'm going to recompile the original source code for the Atari 7800 version of Dig Dug using DASM, which is a modern assembler. So a bunch of source code was recovered behind a dumpster and provided by the Atari Museum. And you can go find source code for Dig Dug. Now, this particular directory for DigDug is kind of interesting because there are a bunch of individual files, but there's also one digdug.s that basically contains everything. So this is like all of those files piled together. Okay, so let me go into my working directory. I would like to use wget to get this file, so let's use brew install wget. Can we get wget that way and have it magically work? Anyway, it looked like that worked. So let's go to the file. Can we go to the file? No, what we want is the raw. Let's say raw. And now we should be able to copy the raw address and then type wget, paste that in. And we got the file, great. So my students, Soumya Jane and William Braga, who are part of my vertically integrated projects team at Georgia Tech called retrofuturistic hardware, created a tool for converting the assembly format from whatever the old assembler that was used to originally create DigDug, which was either some sort of weird, super expensive in-circuit emulator type of thing, or an Atari 1040 ST, and convert that to a new assembly format, namely DASM. So let's go to Soymia's GitHub, the Atari 7800 conversion project, go into DigDug, ignore everything in here except for a particular Python script called conversionscript.py. That's the one that we want. And it's really long and complicated. So I'm very impressed with my students for putting all of this together. It does a lot of stuff. There's a lot of differences in the assembly code and figuring out what to do took a lot of work. Anyway, Let's get the raw file for that. And then we can go into the terminal and w get that file. Okay, now we have the conversion script. So I need to do some modifications on this actually because they were doing their development work on a Windows box and I'm running on a Mac. So I think in order for this to work out, I need to change the... There's probably some way to switch this around automatically. I need to change the backslash to forward slashes, I guess they're called, in terms of how it's handling the delimiter in the path. I think that's all of them. Nope, oh, one more. Let's get you two. All right, so if you're running on Windows, you don't need to do that. There's probably a way to automatically handle that, but I'm not gonna worry about that now. Anyway, so this is the big conversion script. Let's save that. Let's see, I'm going to go to my Google and type Atari 7800 header because there's a header file that the conversion program is going to look for and sort of install for us as part of the source code. And this isn't part of the original Atari 7800 ecosystem back in the 80s. This is a special header file that we need to include inside of our code to create some header information for the A7800 emulator. So I'm just gonna copy this. Startup Visual Studio Code, create a new file, paste that in, and let's save it as header.txt. Oh, and actually one correction. Let me get rid of this romtop.org hex8000 line. I want this to end with the actual cart data starts here. Okay, so I'm going to make two directories. One is called original, and the other is called converted. And the reason I'm doing this is my students set up the script so you could batch process a bunch of files. Of course, we're only going to do one file, so I'm going to move digdug.s into original. I'm also going to move header.txt into original. And now I can try running the script. Now you might be tempted to type Python, conversion script, blah, blah, blah. Nope, that's Python 2. We need Python 3 conversion script.py. It complains something about TK. And here's the GUI. 
let's see, the interrelative input directory path is original, the output directory path is converted. It's going to look for the header in that original folder. You can, of course, change this. We ha can create a output log. Sure, let's do that. Input and output file extensions. The original assembler used .s. We're using DASM that likes .asm. Okay, I'm going to leave the rest of these at their default values and say start. All right, let's see what we got. Let's look in the converted folder. And we have a log file. Let's see what the log looks like. Okay, so it's telling us that it added processor 6502 at the start. It changed the comments to be in the new comment format. It did a bunch of other stuff. Oh, removed octal prefix. Oh, this is something insane. It took us a long time to figure out what was going on with that. Let's see. Bunch of stuff going on. And there's a bunch of stuff that's happening in the conversion that I don't think is even logged here. So lots of complicated things being handled by this script. All right. So moment of truth. Let's load up digdug.asm in Visual Studio Code. Make sure my assembler is switched to DASM. That, that's my language. And let's hit the go button and see what happens. Recursion too deep in code segment growing larger than max. Oh, I remember this. Okay, this is nasty. I don't know why this is, but if we go in and try to find the actual start of the header. Okay, so here's, it's looking for the ROM top. Okay, this isn't the nasty part quite yet. The not quite so nasty part is we need to go put ROM top somewhere in our code. Not just at any org, but the org that indicates where the actual code starts. So a lot of this stuff is either shadowed or is, I don't know what that's even doing there, <laughs> or it's various RAM locations. C000 is the actual place the code starts. So let's make that our ROM top. All right, so that's a ROM top. But the nasty part is this doesn't work either. There's another fix. I don't know why it's unhappy about this, but you would think that it should look, find the ROM top, see that it was C000, and subtract 120 and be happy. But no, for some reason, <laughs> you have to do this manually. I don't know what's going on here, but I wind up taking C000, subtracting 128 decimal, which I think would be BF80. Let's see if this explodes. All right. So I just did that math manually, you know, substituting it in. Syntax error for actual cart data starts here. Let's see, what did I mess up? Oh, how did I do that? I put this on the wrong line accidentally. Okay, this should go here. All right. Now let's try it. Behold, I have Dig Dug. There's my little guy. Are these plukas? I forget what they're called. This is just such a weird game. <laughs> but anyway, here is Dig Dug running, compiled from the original source code. Ah, and I'm not very good at Dig Dug, apparently. I don't have sound effects. I guess that's an emulation issue. I have something set not quite right in my emulator. There's the dragon. We can go on to the next level. So this is compiled from the original code. I guess if you want to be pedantic, we would say it's assembled from the original code. But I like to say compiled even if it's assembly code. Ah, oh, I'm... I'm not going to survive. All right, there you go. Okay, so I thought it would be a good idea to hack the code a bit to prove that I'm not just running some ROM file. So I found this thing that said title page stamps. So what happens if we scramble this up? So I have some Ds and Gs maybe? I don't know. What if I change this to an eight and this to a hundred? 
and this to a 12, and this to an 04. And maybe I should change this to 132 and this to 124. And let's swap these two. So I'll make this 34 and this 28. And let's swap the Atari and Namco logos around, I guess. I don't know. Something like that. All right. Let's um, see what that does. Compile. Okay, here we go. Ah, look at that. Gig gug. <laughs> Oh, and the copyright notices are swapped. All right. <laughs>